This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness. And today we are going to talk about the sad state of armor in Conan Exiles and how it can easily be fixed. Let's get to it. So this is kind of an open letter to the devs and to the community and all that good stuff. I want to make all of you community members aware of the situation with the armor and how flawed it is and make the devs aware of how flawed their game is because I want the game to be better than than what it is. It's a great game. It has insane potential. And with a few little fixes here and there, I, I feel like it can be so much more than what it is. So let's talk a little bit about armor. There's a lot going on with armor. You have the different classes, you have the different uh, temperature protections, you have damage reduction, and you have stats. And the main problem with armor as it is now lies in the stats. If you take a look at all the armors, and I've showed you them multiple times on a spreadsheet already, you find out that each of the armor classes only have one stat per armor. For the most part, there are a few armors in each class that have kind of a, a grab bag of stats to them. For example, the Relic Hunter has four encumbrance and, and three survival. But for the most part, each of the armor classes have one armor with a single dedicated stat. Now, this causes an issue because of the way game progression works in Conan Exiles. And let me elaborate on that a little bit. So when you start out in Conan, you start out, as everybody knows, in the desert area. And it's it's somewhat hot. And as you move up through the desert, it gets a little hotter here and there. But it's it's nothing too crazy and it's nothing that's difficult to deal with. However, in order to progress through the game, you need to spend some time in the northern biome in order to harvest resources like black ice and star metal. You have to get black ice for top tier building, so it's kind of a have to, especially in PvP situations. The downside to this is that the northern biome is an extreme cold temperature, so you have to swap your armor in order to be able to deal with said temperature. So let's say up until this point, you've been wearing the plain old heavy armor because you want that bonus to encumbrance. You're doing a full on encumbrance harvester build and you want that or you need that additional encumbrance from the armor. Well, here's the downside to that. That is an armor with a heat temperature resistance. So it does you absolutely no good in the cold zone. So you're like, OK, well, I'll just swap to a medium armor that gives me encumbrance. Well, no, because the medium armor that gives you encumbrance is also a heat resistance armor. OK, so then you take a look at the light armor and you're like, OK, well, I'll just swap over to light armor because that gives me encumbrance as well. No, that's also a heat resistance armor. So no matter what you do, if you want to get that encumbrance bonus, you're stuck wearing armor that only has heat resistance to it. So now it's time to shut a few people down because I know what's going to show up in the comments and it's going to be a bunch of people saying just get the impervious perk and the fierce vitality perk under vitality. And that's fine. That will allow you to survive the cold. However, you are continuously taking damage. So while you're doing that and you can survive the cold, you can't heal and you can't climb. Not being able to climb makes getting around the map an absolute pain in the butt. Not being able to heal is not a problem you want to have if you're playing PvP. Now, for all of those people out there who are going to say just respec and wear a different armor, that is not always an option because you may not be able to keep the same build. So let's take top tier medium armor. That's going to give you nine encumbrance. You have a simple build. You have 40 in strength, zero in agility, 20 in vitality. Your accuracy is zero. You have 19 in grit. You have 31 in encumbrance plus the additional nine that you get from the armor and you have zero in survival. OK, so now you're going to go to a cold area. So you're going to respec into a vitality armor, which gives you nine to vitality. All right, so let's try this simple build again. So we're going to do 40 in strength. Good, you're OK there. You're going to do zero in agility. Perfect, you're all right. You're going to go to the same in vitality, so put another 20. However, you don't need to this time. You only need to put 11 in vitality because you have the additional nine from the armor. You put zero in accuracy. Let's go ahead and get that encumbrance back up to 40. OK, good to go there. Now let's uh, top off the grit and see if we can get that. Oh, wait, you can't. You can only now put 
put eight in grit. So you're in a situation where before a simple elixir would have gotten you the second perk in grit. Now a simple elixir is going to get you the first perk in grit and you have no chance of touching that second perk. And this happens because of the increased amount of points that you have to put in things as you continuously put points into them. Now, I will say that this doesn't completely ruin the game. The game is still playable, but it's flawed. So you have to ask yourself a question. Do you want a game that's just playable with many flaws or do you want a game that's the best it can be? So I was always taught not to complain about a problem unless you're going to help fix it. And in this case, I have a simple, elegant solution to fix this problem. It's so simple that a modder could do it. The first part of this solution is to remove the stat bonuses from every piece of armor that has them. The next part is to create a set of kits that are compatible with the current kits that you have in the game. So for example, you would be able to use one of these kits as well as say a weight reduction kit on the same piece of armor. Next, you would have three separate tiers to coincide with the current tiered system that's in the game. So you would have tier one, which would give you a kit for each of the different stats for the head and the body, as you see on the screen. Next, you would have the tier two, which would give you a stat bonus for each of the different stats for the legs, the hands and the feet. Finally, you would have tier three, which would cover the stats for the head, the body and the legs. Setting it up this way would never allow you to have more stats than the max stat bonus for that tier. So, for example, if you were at tier one, you will never have more than plus three to your stat bonus at tier two. Two, you will never have more than plus six and at tier three, you will never have more than the max of nine. And at the same time, unlocking these kits can easily be bound to specific things. So for example, you would unlock tier one when you initially unlock the armorer's workbench. And then tier two and tier three can be unlocked respectively at the specific points in the game and tied to thralls as well. So for example, tier three would unlock when you unlock the epic armors and you would need a tier four named thrall in order to craft them. Setting the armor system up in this way not only allows you to have modular armor that you can customize to your own liking for your specific build, it also ensures that you can have that specific build no matter what armor you're wearing in the game. And that's it. That's my fix for the armor problem. It's the simplest solution I could come up with. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure it could possibly just be modded if the devs don't want to make that change to their game. I don't know for sure, but if the mod kit and modding Conan is anywhere similar to Ark's mod system, then yeah, that's it's a piece of cake. If there's any modders that watch this, let me know in the comments what your take on this is. Do you think this is doable? I'd love to hear your opinion. Heck, I may download the kit and give it a shot myself. So that's it. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you like this idea? Do you hate it? Do you like the current system? Do you have a better idea? I'd be interested to hear what you all have to say. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreons for making this episode possible. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Leak Crew Patreon, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.